Hello and welcome to our next webinar with the topic uh, KNX Daily Gateways DGS X6411 Part 2. Yeah, my name is Thorsten Reibel. Uh, I'm sitting here together with Jürgen and also with Gerd Gerdschlag, the responsible product manager for the new Daily Gateways. Um, yeah, we have done four weeks ago already our first webinar around the new Daily Gateways with the first information. Today we go in some more details. Let's have a look first of all to the agenda. So I will summarize at the beginning the main features of the new Daily Gateways and especially the twofold gateway I will uh, underline a bit and uh, to show you here the benefits uh, because it's really new. Um, a twofold device, a twofold Daily Gateway from ABB with complete functions in both channels at least. And then I come to the topic installation a bit, not much, and come to some selected functions in the ETS which are really new and um, yeah, quite interesting. And then I continue with two topics, a bit more detailed, a bit more, let me say, comprehensive. Um, our new daily gateways and emergency lighting. Um, neither complete new topic, but I think it's worth to talk about this a bit in more detail, a bit more in details. And in the last webinar four weeks ago, we had, um, um, sorry, we had, um, yeah, uh, some questions around daily communication, daily query. And I would like to show this as well in some more details. And then Jürgen will continue with uh, yeah, a demonstration of the functions in the IBAS tool. Also he, here he will concentrate on or focus on, on the news, which is really different from uh, the former components. And last but not least, the topic firmware update tool together with the daily gateway, very short uh, practical demonstration. So let's start with an overview of the main features of our two gateways. So we have an KNX Daily gateway one fold and a two fold device. So uh, first of all, you need a power connection because it works also as a KNX power supply, such a gateway. You can connect uh, any voltage between 100 and 240 volt AC DC. So suitable for worldwide use, no limits here. As mentioned, we have an integrated power supply for Dali. The DALI output itself is now uh, 230 volts secure. What does it mean? If you connect um, unintentionally uh, yeah, 230 volt to the DALI output, you will not destroy the device anymore. So um, you can dis or have to disconnect, of course, 230 volt, and then it will work against this component. Yeah, manual operation exists here with the buttons. So one fold, we have one button and with a two-fold, two independent button for the two channels. And it allows you to, to operate all connected DALI ballasts at the same time, so so-called broadcast mode. And we have LEDs, an orange and a, a green one for some diagnostic for showing the status. Also here with the installation part, I will give you some information. So it's a quite easy and fast uh, option to have some kind of diagnostic directly at the device. Um, download behavior of the application is also optimized. If you use our IP interface, or IP router, IPSS311 or IPRS311, um, then during the download of the application, you have a faster download because it supports so-called long frame uh, data packages. Means in one uh, portion, let's say you can send up to 255 bytes. Um, so greater than 15 bytes is long frame communicate or uh, download and that increase or uh, uh, yeah, decreases um, the, the time of downloading. You save time here. Yeah, we have extended forward and status information via ETS, but also in the IBAS tool. Here we'll show you here a bit. Practically, I come also to some status bytes we have here now in our new gateways, uh, giving you new options here. Yeah, the big topic, also here I will show you later a small picture again. Uh, we have a very flexible, let me say, way of, of creating uh, grouping, also light groups, either via DALI groups or via KNX groups, so via common group addresses, or we can operate also each uh, connected ballast um, as a yeah, standalone alone, so independent of others. So we are really very, let me say, powerful here in creating any light groups. In principle, no limits, but I show you later in one picture. Again, this the principle of this uh, this constellation. Yeah, and in addition, we support also DALI emergency lighting converter, as we did with the DGNS one sixteen one, the still existing device. He integrated uh, also in the software of these new components. 
So we can say we have now three components, DGS11, DGS1611, and also the DGN S1611 now in one device or in two, but the second device is only a two-channel component, not really different. So uh, this, um, these new components we cover, in principle, all software functions of these uh, just mentioned uh, still existing three devices. Uh, there are two exceptions, these sequence function, a special like kind of yeah, dynamic lighting and overlapping DALI groups is not existing here. Um, but especially the overlapping DALI groups we can cover by our very powerful uh, creation of, of KNX groups. So in practical in practice here is not a real limit. Yeah, and then I will show to you later some special parameters, functions in the ETS, parametrizable like turn off brightness, basic brightness, or partial failure, also templates we have here, but also here some more information a bit later. Yeah, and then this IBAS tool topic, as you know, we more or less cover this or we integrate in all uh, uh, our new components, um, uh, IBAS tool support, and in the DALI component, it's more or less a must to have it and to use it. And as mentioned, we have uh, improved or extended this the functionality here, and we will see later what is available. Yeah, the new two gateways are based on a complete new hardware, new processor. What does it mean? We have now a huge amount of possible group addresses available here, and also group objects. So you see here each two figures valid for the one fold and the two fold, so 2000 slash 4000 for uh, the group addresses and over 1,000 and over 2,000 group objects per component. Um, it's amazing and uh, we have also a lot of functions inside. So what does it mean? If you enable a lot of functions, you have more and more group objects and more and more group addresses necessary. So practical, no limits here anymore. And um, some of you might remember from the DGS11, we had limitations in group objects and communication uh, and, and group addresses. Uh, which resulted sometimes in, in real limits, practical limits is not existing here anymore. Yeah, let's come to the both gateways again. And I mentioned I would like to come a bit more detailed in, into to the two-fold component. The one-fold device, very simple. We have one DALI output, and you know from the so format devices, we can connect up to 64 DALI. Bellas, in principle, can create 16 DALI groups, 16 light scenes and more features, of course, in the software. If we come to the two-fold device, we have, in principle, two devices in one, two DALI outputs in one component. You see it here, real two independent DALI outputs is up to 64 ballots each output. So in total, up to 128 ballots can be connected. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, we have also two independent DALI outputs here. What does it mean? So if you have a short circuit, for example, in or any malfunctions in one DALI output, the other one is not affected. Will work continuously, no problem. We have two individual buttons here to operate each channel individually in manual mode. Uh, you do nothing else by pressing this button here for two, three seconds. Then it change over to manual mode, and then you can press again to switch on and off uh, all connected ballasts at each channel. So. Coming back to the scenes and groups, DALI groups and light scenes on DALI, uh, 16 each. In total, 32, of course, with two channels. So, and in creation of any grouping means KNX groups with common group addresses. Remember the big amount of group addresses possible or group objects. We have neither any limits here. So, let's summarize two separate DALI worlds in principle in one device. It's, of course, a very economical solution. It does not cost like two DALI devices one fold. Um, so reduced cost per channel, especially. Uh, it's a very competitive solution. You have less competitors on the market if you can use such a, such a component in your project. So it's a real benefit with this uh, new two-fold component. Yeah, and as mentioned, I would like to show you here again these different options to create any light groups. Um, first of all, we have the option to create not a group, but to control each ballast individually. No problem. So for each ballast, you can have individual group objects for switching, dimming, uh, brightness, value, status, and so on. But of course, you can create also KNX groups by assigning 
yeah, common or uh, the same group addresses to one or uh, to two or three or more ballasts, you know, as you know from other multi-channel devices. And in addition, also DALI groups can be created, and DALI groups will be uh, created via the IBAS tool, very fast, very simple. And um, remember, up to 16 DALI groups are available in each channel. And of course, if you have any grouping done in this way, and you would like to have any superior group, also over DALI gateways is a KNX group. You can have yeah, KNX, other KNX groups inside or DALI groups. So a common superior KNX group consisting of KNX groups, DALI groups, if you want also consisting of individual, individually controlled ballasts. So and th thanks to the big amount of, of group addresses available, no limits to do this in this way. Two information here, if a ballast is part of a DALI group, it cannot be a member of a KNX group or of individual control anymore. As you see here, it's only a DALI group or uh, part of these other groups, KNX and individual groups. And in DALI groups, you cannot have overlapping groups. That's what was a restriction or the limit compared with um, the former device, DJS116.1. But you see here with KNX groups, I can create also overlapping groups. So no, practically, not a real, practically not a real limit, let's say. Yeah, installation. Um, Installation itself is very simple. You snap it on the Dean rail, connect DALI and, and power, and of course also KNX. Um, but we would like to give you here some information to do it the right in the right order, let's say. Uh, so we have here a constellation of, of course, a KNX power supply we need, a DALI gateway and the DALI world behind with all the ballasts. To be energized is the power supply KNX, of course the DALI gateway, because it works as a DALI power supply, and the loads itself as well, of course. So it's recommended to, to, to do it the following way. You switch on the KNX power, first of all. You energize the KNX bus in principle. Um, then you connect or you energize the DALI ballasts. Yeah, wait some seconds until they are ready for operation. And then last step, you connect or yeah, you close the... Uh, uh, the circuit for the DALI uh, gateway, the power for the DALI gateway, and um, yeah, connect the mains to the DALI gateway. What does it mean? The yellow LED at the device flashes, and um, the DGS, the DALI gateway, starts in the initialization phase. Difficult word. Yeah. Practically, what does it mean if you have a new system? Um, yeah, that depends on the parameters you have adjusted in the uh, in the DALI device and the DALI uh, gateway. We have a parameter here. What shall happen with DALI addressing? Automatic DALI addressing, yes or no? If you have enabled yes, then automatic addressing takes place of all connected DALI ballasts, chaotic addressing. If you say no, then it does not address automatically. You have to trigger this DALI addressing via the IBAS tool. And this is the default status uh, of this parameter. So um, by default, you have to go into the IBAS tool and trigger DALI addressing intentionally by yourself. So we have a controlled, let me say, process of triggering uh, the DALI addressing. Well, Jürgen will show you later in the IBAS tool, very simple button to activate this. Yeah, to check the DALI voltage itself, of course, um, you can measure principle with, a, um, with an instrument, but you have to be careful. If you have DALI telegrams on the DALI, line, you will not measure correctly the voltage. How to, to yeah, stop any DALI communication, especially the DALI curry, I come to this later. You go into manual mode by pressing two, three seconds here, manual mode, active, and then these DALI query telegrams, uh, you cannot stop normally, will be stopped in this case, and um, you can then measure correctly the DALI voltage. So what can you, you can do, you can disconnect completely the DALI line. You may measure in principle open circuit voltage here. And it has to be between 9.5 and 21 volt DC. Practically 16, 17 volt you will measure here. So the nominal voltage is around 16. Um, you can also connect the DALI line again and me measure at each end of each string. 
behind the Dali Bellas. Maybe a bit less voltage, but should be also in this range here. Uh, so another way to, to check is your Dali uh, voltage here uh, correct. Yeah, and last but not least, some further um, checkings. Uh, is everything correctly connected and working properly at the, at the hardware of the Dali gateway? You remember this from any KNX device to check is the KNX bus existing. You press only the programming button, red LED will go on, and then it's clear for you that the LED indicates correct KNX voltage. Um, supply voltage at the, at the gateway. Um, of course, you can measure this as well. Uh, but in principle, if you switch on the power, what happens at the Dali gateway? A green LED will be on and the yellow LED flashes. Yeah, And uh, after the few seconds, the yellow LED will go off. So it's an indication that um, power is correct. So the green LED is only on and um, indicating you everything is fine. If not the voltage uh, available, uh, the green LED will flash quickly. Five hertz is the frequency here, indicating you, okay, voltage is not existing here. Yeah, and the lighting, as mentioned, is easily uh, to be tested via this manual mode. You press again here, two, three seconds, and then you can switch on and off in broadcast mode, all connected Dali Bellas. Good, let's go now to, to some features or parameters or functions in the ETS, in the application of the ETS. Um, one nice feature here is the so-called template functionality. What does it mean? Um, we can create for different parameter, parameter blocks, yeah, for the standard parameters, e.g. the dimming time and more, for status and forced messages, for the functions, it's forced operation block, burn in or partial failure, slave function or stack is functions, so-called yeah, parameter templates you can use for yeah, all the channels you have created, all the ballasts, instead of creating these parameters by yourself again for each ballast or for each group. So the template can be used for this group or not. You can also parameterize it individually if you want. Uh, it saves a lot of time for you. You can say, okay, in most of the cases, I have the same parameters for all my daily groups, for example. And I create a template only and assign it to all these groups. Yeah, the same possible for the Dali Bellas. So you can save a lot of time if you have some selected groups of Dali Bellas with individual parameters, then you do it individually. Yeah? So it saves time and makes life easier in commissioning um, this yeah, very, let me say, powerful Dali gateways with a lot of possible Dali groups or Bellas behind here. Yeah. So and you see it here, you can choose, for example, here in this group number one, you can choose, shall I take my... Um, parameters from the template, or do I want to have any individual parameterization? Yeah. So, and for each of these six blocks, let's say parameter blocks, you can choose template, yes or no, or individual programming. If you have a look to the twofold device, we have two channels, and there, are, and not of course, but there are the templates independent for each channel. So you create a template for channel A, uh, if you wanted also another template for channel B. So it's channel-wise, let me say, this template. So a nice feature, useful for such components here. Yeah, then let's come to the turn off brightness. Um, um, you can yeah, uh, assign this to any output, to a Dali group, to a ballast. Uh, so very individual here, also to the template of part of this uh, uh, option. Yeah, what does it mean, turn off brightness? If you send an off command, it does not switch off completely. It goes down to a turn off brightness. You can parameterize. Yeah, so this level of turn off can be parameterized, but also the dimming time to go down from uh, the former level to this turn off brightness can be um, adjusted here. Useful for normal switching off, but also in the staircase function, an option you will see later. Um, yeah, as mentioned, the time to reach this turn off brightness can be adjusted. And you also can activate and deactivate this via communication object. So if you want, you say, come on, I don't need it all the time, but sometimes it's important to switch off, not 
down to zero. Uh, you can deactivate and activate this here. Um, this function here and others are sometimes not easy to parameterize correctly in the ETS. Why? Um, because you have to adjust something on, on two, two locations, let's say, in the parameters. Uh, not only at the channel maybe, but also superior parameter has, is related to this one. And to help you in this case, to find your way through the parameters, we have also here sometimes a hint. Please take care, enable group ballast participation on group ballast X page. So you get a hint where you have to adjust an addition, something to have this function completely available. Yeah. It's, a, it's a nice feature. Yeah just only a help text, but necessary in this, such a case. Yeah, it's a basic brightness, something I would like to, to explain here also. Uh, so we have turn off and basic brightness. The basic brightness is only part of the staircase lighting function, it has to do with staircase lighting function. And a lot of parameters are adjustable. I don't want to go in all details. It's even better to look at the, at the graph, at the diagram, and how does it work in practical practice practically and yeah, which parameters can be adjusted here. And you see here a typical staircase lighting function, you switch on the light, it dims up to the brightness staircase in a certain time, adjustable. Then we have the staircase time itself. How long shall the light be on staircase time? Then we dim down to the basic brightness. Now we come to the basic brightness, which is another level within a certain time as well. And then after the whole time of basic brightness, we go down to the, if we want, to the turn off brightness, just explained. So it's a two step switching off here. Yeah, You can use it, for example, as a, as a warning um, light. So it's staircase time goes down now to, to a lower level or to zero maybe. And uh, if you might remember from normal staircase lighting also in other devices, we can pump up uh, the staircase time again by pressing again the local button up to five times and um, uh, to have the, the normal brightness staircase light uh, again available. Yeah? So it's a very comfortable way to, to operate staircase lighting here. There's two, two levels of switching off in principle um, called a basic brightness. Yeah, let's come to some Yes, uh, status information or fault information is such a case. Um, you know, in DALI, in a DALI system, it's very important, and it's more or less standard, to have a fault message in case of lamp failure or ballast failure. Uh, this is not completely new. In the former devices, it was, it was not always yeah, so, so easy to handle sometimes because we had only coded uh, telegrams available. You had to decode uh, in the visualization to find out which ballast has which fault. And, um, now we have for each ballast or DALI group, of course, also for the output A or B, um, individual one bit telegrams for ballast and lamp fault. Okay, here you have to decide do I would like to have a lamp fault or ballast fault, or both as an or, let me say, feedback, so either lamp or ballast fault. But I'll show you in the next slide, it's easy now to, to um, yeah, detect which ballast maybe has. A lamp fault, or which light number has a lamp or a ballast fault. Let's have a look. Um, what you, of course, always have is a collective message per output. So you can get a message. I have here made a screenshot of the uh, related uh, group objects. So in output A or B, you have individual one bit telegrams available or group objects available, either lamp fault or ballast fault. This is a kind of collective message, maybe to your smartphone. Oh, in channel A of this ballast, sorry, of this gateway, I have one of these faults. And then you might go to your visualization where you have an individual one bit telegram for each of these ballasts, showing you in this case lamp or ballast fault. But as you got here, lamp fault information, it can be only lamp fault also in such a ballast itself. Yeah? This could be a solution here uh, practically. And um, yeah. Is in, in addition to this uh, coded uh, information, one byte or two byte, I don't uh, remind, remember that at the moment, but in this coded telegram, you have also this information, but here also individually as one bit available. Yeah, another feature 
very new, I would like to show here, first of all, in the graph, partial failure. What does it mean, partial failure? It's related to an output. And you have to define, first of all, what is a partial failure in your case? You can decide, is it a malfunction of the daily voltage? Or is emergency lighting is this, uh, right now active? Or do I have a lamp failure or ballast failure? These are conditions to trigger a partial failure action, let's say. And then you can decide, okay, partial failure is existing at the moment. What does it mean? I can send to my own output to all, or not to all, to selected DALI ballasts or DALI groups, a command to go to a certain brightness level. For example, most of the ballasts I would like to switch on, switch on in such a case to 100%, others maybe to less brightness. So I can select which groups and ballasts shall go to which level. Internally means related to all other ballasts or groups in this output A. Furthermore, you can use it additionally or only. You can send an external yeah, telegram on the bus to trigger actions in other devices, maybe in other ballasts, eh, sorry, other daily gateways on other actuators. Yeah? And it's a telegram, you can use it also as a message yeah, that this kind of partial failure is, is existing at the moment with this device here, at this output. Yeah. So this is possible here and allows you some, some interesting functions. And what I've explained right now is also visible here or in this text. I don't have to go into details, but you see here in the parameters, you can adjust what is your criteria for, for partial failure, what shall be the brightness level of yeah, a dedicated ballast or group, yeah, any value can be assigned here. Yeah. And what is your action internal to the own DALI output? Yes, or external via a group object. Both together is also possible. Yeah. So let's have a small example. So for example, uh, you can say, okay, in, in case of any partial failure, in your case, you have defined it as, as lamp or ballast failure in your office building, all corridor or staircase lighting shall go to 100% brightness yeah, due to security reasons. So if, if any lamp fails in the offices, you have at least uh, maximum brightness in the general areas of your office building. Now, this could be a solution in such a case. So very new, not existing before, and or existing daily gateways at the moment, but in the new devices available. Yeah, and final topic here, a status byte example, uh, in this case for output A and B. So a status byte is available. Um, yeah. I have made a screenshot here from the from the manual of the device. Um, it's two bytes, yeah, and uh, byte zero to seven. Each bit of this byte indicates you any different yeah status information. For example, is there any uh, yeah overcurrent or short circuit on the DALI side? Yeah, something wrong. Uh, with a DALI line, yeah. or are there connected more than 64 ballasts with bit number four? So each bit gives you an individual information in the channel A or B. Yeah, it's a channel related uh, status byte. But we have also per ballast or DALI group, if you want, uh, status bytes available, um, giving you here similar, let me say, information. Um, or in this case, we have it related to, to ballast itself, so it has to do with, with any any blocking. Is uh, ballast blocked at the moment? Um, is any special functions like like uh, burn in active? Yeah. Uh, so all these information are available and can be visualized, for example, here uh, in any visualization per ballast and DALI group. So very individual status information available uh, in our components here, in our new components. Okay, I would stop here with uh, some features of the ETS applications that are even or not, uh, more available. Um, two topics I would like to go in some more details has to do first of all with emergency lighting. And um, yeah, some of you might remember from the DGNS 1611 uh, that emergency lighting and KNX and DALI is not completely new for ABB. So we had already a solution, but now we have integrated this also in these new components, of course, because it's a solution we have in some projects. And in total, combined combination of DALI, KNX, and uh, emergency lighting is a very yeah interesting solution. 
I would like to make it a bit transparent in the next slides. So first of all, what is emergency lighting? It's defined as lighting, which will be active in case of malfunction of the general artificial lighting in the building. Typically power failure means is failing and uh, everything is dark normally, which is not accepted due to security reasons and some selected lights has to be switched on. And what we are supporting here is um, emergency lighting, the so-called single battery emergency lights. You see here an example in LED lighting with a daily um, emergency converter and a battery integrated in one component principle. So case of power failure, this lamp will switch on automatically and will illuminate uh, parts of the building so that you can safely run around and, and leave the building or maybe also you have to work at, at certain areas continuously. So also this is kind of emergency lighting. So this is a solution here and you can understand that some project is necessary to have this. In principle, very simple solution. This component itself detects under voltage and automatically switch on the LED light. In principle, first of all, independent of KNX of DALI. Um, but what is the challenge here? But this is very essential. You have to monitor this uh, emergency lighting, both the electronic, the lamp itself, but also the battery, of course. And these tests you have to do continuously in the emergency lighting system, and you have to log the data. You have to store the data. And this is our task here together with this um, KNX DALI gateway. So complete testing and monitoring of the solution. Let's have a look to a typical yeah, combination here of all these things I've just discussed. We have our KNX system, we have our KNX DALI gateway, and we have general lighting here via DALI ballasts. And at the same DALI line, we have also emergency converter here or here available. So we can combine it in, in one DALI line. Um, but of course, you have the completed solution here. So what is necessary? The emergency lighting converter works itself in case of under voltage, but testing has to be carried out together with the total solution we have here. So the DALI gateway will more or less trigger the necessary tests. The test results will be sent back via DALI and our DALI gateway to KNX. And in this case, we need a visualization software to store all this data. And then we can lock the data and can prove that we have done all necessary tests and the system is properly working, of course, because if the test results give us the information that something is not working properly, we have to take action, of course. So general emergency lighting in one system with more function, of course, less investment because it's really part of our still existing DALI KNX solution. We don't need any additional wiring and any additional system. The only thing we need is our visualization software which might already exist in your project uh, because you need it also for other purposes. Yeah, what kind of text tests are available? Um, principle two tests, the function test. Monitors the electronic of the device, the lamp, so, so complete hardware. It's a very fast test. And uh, after some seconds, you get the feedback. Jürgen will show it to you, to you together with the IBAS tool. You can trigger these tests also there. And um, then you get the information, test successful, everything is working properly. A duration test has to do with the monitoring of the battery. Of course, uh, if you have emergency lighting, it's not only a question of some seconds to have emergency light, some hours. The light has to run and you need, uh, let me say, uh, yeah, uh, enough capacity inside the battery to have uh, some hours light available. And this has to be monitored also continuously. And so it's a kind of discharge and charge process you have to do with a battery to check is the battery working properly. So this is more or less a man mandatory test you have to do. And there's a further optional so-called partial duration test. What does it mean? You discharge not completely the battery, only a small time. And if you see after such a time, you have such a decrease of the capacity of the, of the, the charging state, so you can assume, okay, it looks good. Uh, I don't have to do the complete duration test at the moment. Seems uh, to be properly working. Uh, again, it's an optional test only, not, let me say, completely replacing his duration test. Yeah, to understand a bit the way how we trigger the tests and how we get back 
both the status of the converter, the emergency converter, but more important, the test results. I have here some slides to, to show this. I don't go into all the details of every yeah, uh, um, group object here. You see it's a one byte object. It goes up to six bytes with a lot of information inside. Uh, but in principle, you can trigger the test. And that's our task of our DALI gateway per emergency lights for each individual emergency uh, light. But later on, you see also, you can trigger it also per output, per channel, output A or B. Um, I start with a triggering per emergency light. What does it mean? I have to send a telegram to trigger, and then I get status information, and finally, the test result. And I can trigger these three kind of tests I've just mentioned. Yeah, how does it communication object looks like? It's a one byte. Um, yeah, communication object. And um, just for your information, we can parameterize in the parameters in the ETS application two different formats. To be compatible with the still existing GGNS 116.1, this was an own format, we can do this as well. Or we use this standard data point type now from the KNX organization, DPT CTC, um, which will be used then most probably, but uh, to be compatible with the older one, it's also the DGNS format available. Yeah, and the content of this telegram is more or less only the type of test I would like to trigger. Yeah, and um, you see it here. It's we use only the first three bits of this one byte uh, telegram. Yeah, and then if we trigger the test, we get status information. Yeah, so status information is a two byte telegram. Um, you see here some first explanations is. Um, which mode does the emergency converter have right now? Is it normal mode or emergency mode? Is any test running? Which test is running is the status? Yeah. And if you have triggered the test, this is dynamic. Some, some different status information might come step by step. And if any time the test results are appearing, then of course you have this additional telegram here, emergency lighting test results, six byte, <laughs> with a lot of information per bit here. And I show you here only part of this explanation of the different bits. You see here examples. Um, it depends also on the type of emergency lighting test I have triggered. Was the test successful? What did I trigger? What is the battery capacity? What is the battery discharging time? So these are real values you get as a feedback. And um, yeah, it's a comprehensive uh, result object, let's say. Yeah. And as mentioned, you can also trigger tests per output. So it's two options you have here. Also triggering is possible, but here are some more features. You can stop also a test. You can start or enable here so-called automatic emergency lighting tests. I come to this. And two modes are also available, which might be sometimes necessary to adjust. Uh, so some more options. But finally, you get also status information and the result of your test. Um, status addressed or result addressed, what does it mean? You get then an information, which ballast number has this status or which ballast number has this result available. Let's go quickly through these group objects. Um, yeah, it's a two byte object to trigger emerging line test address. What does it mean? Again, which kind of test I would like to start? And the low byte um, contains the ballast number because an addressed telegram, so-called. So here you say, okay, I need, uh, trigger, need to trigger the ballast number 15. Then the low byte, you have number 15, and which kind of test, and you have to assign here the right number for this type of test you would like to have. So long and comprehensive group objects, but allowing you to, to do the right things you have to do for triggering here. So then we have the stopping, one bit, very simple. If you need, you can stop any time. Your, your your emergency test. And um, as mentioned, you can also, yeah, release, let's say, automatic emergency lighting tests. What, what does it mean? Some converters on the market support these automatic tests. So they are able to run continuously these automatic tests. You don't have to do anything. You get only any time the results. Uh, it, it runs by itself. Um, to activate this, we have an own group object here. You can say, okay, I would like to have it. It's possible in my converter. So 
then you trigger this here and you can also adjust, okay, depending on the type of test, how is a test cycle? So a functional test is not so often, uh, sorry, it's more often necessary than a, a duration test. So you can here adjust it in, time, in days, test cycle. Duration test, maybe every three months or every two months, um, you can adjust the weeks here, how often it shall take place. Yeah? And also between the testing of individual values, automatic uh, uh, test, um, you can adjust here time. So. Uh, the delay time or offset time um, between each balance where the automatic test shall take place in order to have not all the tests, uh, the tests running at all the time at the same time at all balance connected. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, this is the object here to enable this. I just mentioned this, uh, just to do this. Um, it's a start request for automatic emergency lighting test, so called. One bit, very simple, if you would like to have it. And it's possible in your. Uh, your converter. And last but not least here, um, I mentioned two special modes I can activate, inhibit or rest mode. Mm. It's a one bit telegram to activate this. Inhibit mode is only possible if the emergency lighting is not active. So we have no emergency lighting situation. And then do nothing else but deactivating this ballast to be switched on in case of emergency. It does not switch on in case of emergency. You, you disable in principle emergency light per ballast here, or per, per output here. Um, in test situations, you might need this, um, but of course, in normal operation, normally not. If emergency lighting is active and I activate the same group object with value one, then I go to rest mode, and then the light will be switched off. So it's normally in, in switched on because it's emergency lighting mode at the moment. So you deactivate the running emergency light in such a case. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, sometimes necessary, some special situations. So here is the option, inhibit or rest mode. Yeah, and then again, the status information, I can do it very quickly here. It's so-called emergency lighting test status addressed in this feedback because it's for the whole output, you get the information um, in the low byte, which DALI ballast has this status. Yeah? And of course, what is the actual status of this ballast? Yeah. And the same for the test results. So result itself, but also information to which ballast it's related here. Good, you see it's it's a lot of different uh, communication, a lot, lot of different group objects, also some parameters. It's a powerful solution, and but in principle, it's nothing else but triggering a test and getting a feedback in terms of results, but also of the status if necessary. That's all what you get. And then you can take this data and store it in your visualization. And finally, you have a, a test report of all your ballasts um, you have to do have for, for emergency lighting. Okay, let's summarize topic emergency lighting. Um, yeah, it's a comprehensive and powerful solution to integrate emergency and conventional lighting in one dialy canic system, as already mentioned. Um, we have optimized the application in, in, in this way here a bit. Um, so it's it's still powerful as mentioned, some, some parameters, but in total, if maybe also together with my presentation or my description, it's, it's understandable. So if you need this, um, it's finally easily possible to do. Yeah. yeah, what does it mean if you have such a solution? Um, of course, you have benefits in case uh, in, in terms of less wiring and, 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 and uh, less installation and also in costs, as mentioned. And it fulfills this IEC standard. Uh, it's a 62386202. Uh, it's a kind of standardization for DALI and emergency lighting uh, defined here, and um, this is of course is covered by our solution. And remember, a visualization software is is necessary to log all these data, these test results especially. So my message here is finally for those who are working or going are working for sales uh, in any commercial project where you have Canix and Dali and also emergency lighting is required. Um, it's a must to talk about this solution at least. It works with single battery emergency lighting, so not with 
the central battery systems, but it's coming more and more the single battery solutions. And in total, not a complete new, new solution for us, but a well running and uh, proven solutions in a lot of projects worldwide already. Okay, my last topic for today is um, Dali communication. And there were in the last um, webinar four weeks ago, and our first webinar around these new Dali gateways, there's some question came up. Uh, it has to do with, with the practice, of course, the combination of KNX and Dali in terms of communication, in terms of in terms of reaction times. Um, I would like to make it a bit transparent here. Um, Dali is based on a standard protocol, as you know, transferred via yeah, two wires with a speed of 1,200 baud or bits per second. Um, and we have a so-called Dali, uh, sorry, master-slave system. Um, the Dali gateway, our KNX Dali gateway, is a master. And the master asks the connected bellows, these are the slaves, cyclically, um, what is your actual brightness level and do you have any lamp failure? Uh, this is a continuous process and all possible Dali bellows, 64, will be queried, let's say, this way. And this is a continuous cyclical process and between each query, we have yeah, between 40 and 50 milliseconds time. Independent of any action, so nothing happens on your, your, your lighting at the moment, it's only a continuous process. Of course, if you would like to operate something, you would like to switch on a ballast or light, then a so-called DALI command will be sent immediately and of course, the light will be switched on. Yeah. For example, direct arc power is one command, switch on or send a brightness value, but I show it to you in the next slides how it works in, in, in principle. So, um, how to record the Dali traffic, sometimes necessary, and I did it here, of course, to show you how it works. There's a Dali USB interface available, so you connect it via USB to your PC, and you connect it to the Dali bus, of course, kind of interface, and then there exists a so-called Dali monitor software to record the traffic. That's possible, that's available on the market, and to show you in practice how it works, or I've made a screenshot here only, but I've recorded this uh, practically. Um, in my case, I have now a DGS1-6411 and six bellas were connected. And if we have a look to the first ballast, A0 is address zero means the first ballast. The gateway sends a query actual level and the ballast give an answer because it, uh, it, it was asked what is your actual level and it sends back in this case 254, 100% on. Next query, uh, sorry, then it fo it's, it's followed by query lamp failure. So if the ballast exists, it asks for the lamp failure. Is the lamp properly working? If there's no answer, then of course, lamp is okay. The same will be done with the next one, query actual level, query lamp failure, and so on. Until it reaches the last, in my case, number five or six ballasts are connected, A5 query actual level and lamp failure off. And then the further ballasts, not existing in my installation, will be asked only query actual level. No answer. What does it mean? No answer, not existing, not necessary to ask for, for query lamp failure because it's not existing. So this is a continuous process until A63, and then it starts again with A0. So if you see the time between each query, it's, you see here, date and time in the last columns here. Um, seconds and on the end, we have three tickets for milliseconds. So you see here 904, 941, around 40 milliseconds between each query. Yeah, what can we do? And this is something, again, uh, related to our new Dali KNX gateways we can increase the Dali query time. The parameter, pause between two Dali queries in steps of 100 milliseconds. I did it here in my case, three by 100, 300 milliseconds. I recorded again the traffic. And you see here at milliseconds, it's around 300 milliseconds delay between each uh, Dali query. Why is it necessary or why might it be necessary? Uh, in some special cases, if you have, for example, emergency lighting converter, which are not able to handle these standard 
DALI queries. So it's too fast for these components. You can increase this time to have a correct answer of these devices. Yeah? So it's a bit special, and, but uh, we have seen this in, in the, the practice and project. So this might help you in such a case. And we have experiences with uh, emergency lighting converter on the market. Yeah? Um, two additional information. Uh, if the IBAS tool is connected, then this additional pause time is ignored. It's not active anymore, so it goes down to the standard time. Otherwise, the, let me say the update time in, in the IBAS tool is too long, of course. Yeah? It's not very useful to have it in such, such a case, but connecting the IBAS tool is not a uh, 24-hour business, it's only for your own testing period. Manual mode, remember, if you activate manual mode by pressing two, three seconds this button on each device uh, per channel, you activate manual mode and then DALI query is completely disabled in order to measure correctly the DALI voltage. Remember my former slides in this case. Yeah, I mentioned also if I send a DALI command during my DALI query telegrams, you see it here, direct arc power off, it will be sent, of course, immediately. So this is not waiting until <laughs> one cycle is over. It's really sending in between uh, on the DALI side. And um, I've activated here, or switched off the first ballast, A0. It goes on with the DALI query of all other, 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 other ballasts. And anytime it comes back to the, in the next cycle to the ballast A0 again, and you see, then you get also query lamp sorry, query actual level is off with zero. Here it was still on, 254 at the beginning and the next cycle, because I've switched off, it's off here. Um, another important um, explanation is here to understand the communication on DALI a bit. Remember, we can create DALI groups, 16 per output, but we can also can, uh, create KNX groups with common group addresses. No limits in principle in our new DALI gateways. To check what does it mean uh, for traffic on the DALI side, I've made here two screenshots again. A DALI group with five ballasts results only in one DALI telegram, DALI command on the DALI side, because it's a DALI group and the DALI ballast, sorry, the DALI gateway knows I have to send only one group command on DALI because my ballasts are assigned to but these spellers are assigned to a DALI group and um, one command only necessary. If I create a KNX group, the same in principle out of five spellers, we have to send for each spellers an individual command five times. Yeah. And if you see here, the delay time for these telegrams, it's around 30 milliseconds. So between each command for each spellers, you see a delay of 30 milliseconds. And you can assume if you have a huge group, maybe 60 participants, until the final one gets its telegram, it takes time. Yeah. yeah. So um, you will see a real, let me say, running light in such a case in practice, not with a DALI group. That's the advantage of DALI groups as well. Yeah. So it's not only the way to, to program this a bit easier in the IBAS tool, but also in terms of communication in advantage. Yeah, and one, yeah, it's a first glance, a bit complicated uh, graph, but I will explain what I have recorded and displayed here. Um, let's have the complete communication, both on the KX side and on the DALI side, in terms of time. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean? So these marked uh, figures here are the time where it took place. So I did the following. I sent from a push button, a KX push button, a telegram to switch on a dedicated ballast on the DALI side via our KNX DALI gateway. So I sent the command 881, also 47 seconds, 881 milliseconds on KNX. And on DALI, it's more or less at the same time, some milliseconds later, sent out, and of course, light will be switched on. You will, will not see any delay in principle, or you will not feel any delay. If you would like to have a status information on KNX, and this is always a request or very often a request, I would like to have real status message on KNX. I've programmed here also a status feedback from the DALI gateway for this ballast, ballast number one. And if you compare these two times here, 
881 milliseconds to 910 milliseconds is very fast the status on KNX as well. How is it possible? Um, very simple, we or the daily gate we assume the light is properly working and was operated the correct way and it simulates at the beginning only the real status. Yeah? So it sends back, correct, light is on, status one on KNX via 10x telegram. Yeah? And in, in most of the case it's correct, of course, yeah? because the system is running properly. The real status feedback coming later from the DALI comes via query actual level in the next cycle, whenever uh, you have uh, sent out this command. Yeah? This might be a bit later. You see here the time delay, it's 47.910 to 49.297. So it's around 1.4 seconds later. In most of cases, it's not a new status. It's a status already sent out by the daily gateway on KNX because it's the same. Yeah? So um, this way of, yeah, sending back the status uh, on KNX, it's a good way, it makes it fast in reaction. And um, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, it's of course correct. But latest, of course, you have also real status feedback in the next cycle of your query. Okay, I come really to my final slide for today before Jürgen is continuing. Um, conclusion of what I've said right now. DALI as a master, the gateway, and the slaves are the balance, allows via these daily query commands to achieve the correct brightness level and also detect any lamp failure immediately or after a certain time, but uh, it's a continuous process and it works fine. Yeah? Any commands on DALI will be sent directly, so no delay in principle. Status information, thanks to the simulation or simulated feedback, works quickly on KNX. Yeah? And, um, but of course, if you have a lot of status feedback for individual yeah, KNX groups, for each lamp you have a, uh, a feedback, of course, there's also a lot of traffic on the KNX side and uh, has to be considered, of course, as well. Yeah. Good. Yeah, in addition, individual status information, as mentioned, can cause higher traffic on KNX and delay, can cause delay in status information. Okay. Um, yeah, I would hand over now to Jürgen. He would like to show you a bit in practice some news, new features in the IVAS tool now. So, and um, I just hand over to Jürgen now. Hello and welcome. Jürgen Schilder is speaking. I'm going to show you the new functions of the IBAS tool regarding the DALI gateway and how is it possible to make a firmware update of the DALI gateways via the ETS app. So at first some words about the IBAS tool. We have still given two webinars, one in March 2014 and the last one in the March 2017. You can find all the webinar recordings and the slides on our training and qualification database on our portal. So when you select the application, install, installation and commissioning, then you get the two webinar recordings and the two PowerPoint presentations. So please have a look at the main topics, how you can use the IBAS tool, how you can install it and how you can use it. So a small overview about the IBAS tool. The IBAS tool uh, supports, for example, the installer or the system integrator during commissioning and doing service or doing diagnostic. The iBus tool is uh, independent ETS, so you have not to install the ETS, it's not necessary. But the first step is uh, use the ETS, assign the group addresses, set the parameters and download the application to the device with the ETS. And afterwards, you can use the iBus tool, for example, for doing some commissioning like Nadali gateway or to test some settings like, for example, in the shutter actuator or in other devices. So for more information or download of the iBus tool, go to abb.com and uh, slash knx. So then I would like to share my desktop, just a second. So now you can see the latest version of the IBUS tool. This is our at the moment test version. You will get soon a new version. So I connect now my 
the IPath tool to the DALI gateway with the individual address, for example 1153, press the button connect and then the IPath tool reads out all the settings of my DALI gateway, so it will last some seconds. Just wait a little bit. So, okay, here on the first page, the so-called general page, I can come, I get some general information about the, the, the DALI gateways, about DALI output A, or when I have the two fold with the two outputs. So now at a DALI page, you know, maybe this page from our former DALI versions, you can see all 64 DALI uh, ballast single devices. And on the right side, I can see in here my 60 groups. This is the same like before. But what we have new is our page, our so-called overview page. So now when I click here on the overview page, I get here a list of all my parameterized groups and my ballast. So let me begin here with the first one. You see here the group number one. You see here some of these bulbs. It means this is a group. And you can see here the name of this group, which is the living room. I have entered this text in the ETS parameter to my group number one. So it makes sense to enter a name. Then I can see it here in my IPAS tool. I can see, for example, the brightness level. Yeah, if an additional function now is um, uh, enabled, yes or no, like here, for example, in the DALI device number three, I have the staircase lighting is now enabled, but is not used, it is inactive. Yeah, or here my DALI device number two, I have here enabled the forced operation or the blocked function, then I see here it is active. So, so it's only an overview of all groups and parameterized ballast. For more information, I can go to the page detail. Detail, I get really more detailed information about a selected group or ballast. So for example, I can start here with my group number one. You see again here the text, group number one, living room. So the text comes from the ETS. And I see here at the moment an overview that the output or my group number one is switched off. You see here the status of no brightness level. And on the right side, I get more information if the burn in function is now active or deactive, here at the moment it is inactive, the staircase lighting is, is inactive, it is not used as a slave, but I can see here on the right side in my group number one, I have a lamp failure and I have a ballast failure. And the basis, basis brightness or the forced operation or blocked function is not used. When I want to send a command to my device, I have to enable here the configuration mode, for example, and then it's possible to send the command to my group number one. So I can maybe uh, send here value and press the button right, and then it sends here to my group number one. So next example is, for example, is my group number four, which is, for example, here my office. So my group number four, uh, I have used it as a slave. That's why you can see I have here the additional function slave. I can activate or deactivate a slave. And at the moment, the status of the slave function is here inactive. So let's go, for example, to my device number, number which is device number three. This is my single control ballast. At the moment, it is off. Here on the right side, you can see I have used it, uh, I have enabled the burn in function and the burn in function now is active. So the next one hour, 50 minutes is only possible to operate it with 100%. So now when I send here a value for example 29%, then what happens? He switch on and he goes to 100% because in this burn in time, the device can only switch on or off, but not dimmed. So what else? Let's go, for example, to another DALI device, which is DALI device number two. Number two is I used, for example, the forced operation. And now at the moment, this is active. So when I want to switch off the device, it's not possible. Or when I want to send another value, not possible. Because forced operation or blocked has the higher priority than here the manual operation. And the device is every time here fixed on the value 85%. So that's what you can do here in this over uh, in this over in this page detail. So what else? Here in the page emergency, we can start the test, the so-called function tests or the duration test, the partial duration test, and we can check also the battery capacity. So now in my uh, ETS uh, testing board here, I have an emergency converter with the address number 17. You can see here the emergency level. So when we have emergency situation, he goes to 255, uh, the value 255, which is 100%. We can still see here the battery capacity and the last test. 
So if I want, I can, for example, test here or trigger our function test. So I click here on the button function test. And then you will see here at the moment, the latest test, the function test is now running. So it will last about 15 seconds. Function test means the LED or my emergency converter, the LED switches on and runs about 10, 15 seconds. And during this time, yeah, the, the, the LED is now tested. And after this time, we get here our testing result. So please wait some seconds after maximum 50 seconds when the time is over, then we get here the result and the information that the test now is finished. So wait a little bit. So now you see here the test is now finished and we get here our test result that uh, function test now was successful. So also we can test here the battery when I click here battery, battery, battery capacity test and I get the information here yeah, that the battery is now nearly unloaded 6%. So these are the new features we have here, the new pages we have here in our DALI gateway, not only the overview, we have the detail and the emergency converter. In our main page, for example, our general page, we have also some information here about the DALI gateway voltage, the supply voltage, if it's okay, or for example, the manual operation is running. So now, Thorsten, now please press the manual operation button and then you will see the status here change to yes. Uh, here you can see because Taste Thorsten now has uh, started the manual operation. So please stop the manual operation and then you will see the status goes back to no. So that's what you can see here. And in the other page, we can uh, select our DALI devices or our groups and can switch it on or dim or also blink some DALI devices. Now, when I say here blinking, we get another important information. Yeah, blinking means we can send the telegram to the selected DALI device or groups every one or two, four seconds on and off. It's maybe not, not a problem for LED, but when you have fluorescence lamps, then please don't use dimming or the blinking function. And now I have here the, uh, selected the behavior. It is blinking every two seconds. And now when I go to the overview the DALI of my 64 devices and I press here uh, select one group or one DALI device for example like here my DALI device number five and then the, the, the DALI ballast with the address number five is blinking here with uh, two seconds on two seconds off or when I click here on a group then this selected group in my dining room all ballast which belongs to my group number uh, two the dining room group now blinking every two seconds on or off. So we have blinking, switching, or also dimming is possible. So what is also new, we have here the possibility to start the automatic DALI addressing. So when we set the parameter in the ET, ETS, which is default no, then we can trigger here the DALI addressing. Yeah. Or we can also start here the, the DALI device monitoring. So after we have started the triggering, we can change the DALI short addresses and when everything is okay. We start here or we trigger the DALI device monitoring. So the gateway knows which devices it has to monitor, how many ballasts and the addresses of the devices which should be monitored. And we can also clear the DALI device monitoring if you want. On the right top, we have some buttons, for example, here we can remove a DALI device from a single group or we can clear all group memberships of DALI devices. And this here is also new. We can reset a selected DALI device, yeah, for example, uh, like he leaves the factory. Uh, this icon should be a factory. Or when we click on the right button, then we reset all DALI devices. Set all DALI devices, all group memberships, uh, the DALI short addresses, the scene values, everything is deleted. Like you have a very, uh, like you have a new device ballast which comes from the factory. And here um, downstairs, uh, downs we see here for example some more information. Also, if we have more than 64 devices yeah, connected to our DALI output. Yeah, or we have still overlapping groups. It can happen when we add a DALI ballast, which is now uh, used or programmed via our DGS-161, which has DALI uh, overlapping group information. Or when we, when we have here short circuit on our DALI uh, wiring, then we get also here information. So, and here, this is also new, our so-called legend. It's a really nice function. So we can see here, uh, on the on the top, the information which are now read out from the device, and on the bottom we get the information which comes from the ETS configuration. 
Like for example, in the ETS, we have done here the parametration and said, okay, this is an emergency converter. And then we get here a green icon. This is parameterized in the ETS. And 7, 7 means we have parameterized it. It's a single control device or group S or G. And 5, we see our DALI short address. And on the top, we see the, the values which really read were really were, uh, written out, read read out from the from the ballast. So one is, for example, also the information if it's emergency converter, yes or no, is it single controlled or group controlled, and then we can compare the values. And we get additional information here, so-called framing errors. So framing errors means the master, the gateway sends a command to a ballast and he gets back no valid telegram. Like two devices have the same short address and then we have overlapping telegrams. So we can detect such such situation yeah, when we have here FE called framing errors. Of course, we have not only this legend here. I hope you remember our help button. So on the top on the menu, when you press help, then you get on the right side yeah, um, a full uh, help file with a lot of information about here our DALI, DALI devices, DALI gateway. Good. So far, I think the most important new functions of the DALI, of the IVAS tool about regarding the DALI gateway. Good. Then I would stop here with the DALI gateway stop here discontinue so how to make an update of uh, a kenix device like our new dali gateways or the existing presence detector for example you can download this update app is an additional app which runs inside ats from the website of the kenix association so go to my kenix.org log in and download this ets app and install it in the ets so after you have installed the app it appears here in the menu extras ABB KNX bus update. So when I click here, I get here another window, which is our KNX update window. So in my project, I have here my line number one, three DALI gateways with the individual address 119, 1153, and 1158. And these three devices appear here in the list. Yeah. And now when I press here on the button reload, what happens? The update tool scans my KNX line and now he finds only two gateways. You see the first one here is a red cross, not found. This is at the moment not installed. He still found the 1153 with the firmware version 008, which is the last one. So it's not necessary to update this version. And the 1158 with the firmware version 007. So you get here the information update possible. So at the beginning, I can select here my latest firmware version, which is 008. You can download the latest firmware version from our website. And we select here the device 1158 and we press on the button update firmware. And then the update of the firmware now starts. It will last some seconds and then the DALI gateway has the latest firmware version. Good, not very difficult. You can find also these steps here in the presentation. So let me go to the next slides. This is about the DALI gateway. So here the steps how you can download this free of charge additional ETS app and here the steps how you have to do it. Good. So far a small introduction of the new functions regarding the DALI gateway and now I'd like to hand over to Thorsten. Yeah, thank you Jürgen. So we have almost reached the end of our webinar. A bit longer but I Announced already, it takes 115 today. Um, yeah. As always, we would like to remind you of our certified trainings we have still this year here in Heidelberg um, in July, our advanced course, and in October, our tutor course, as always. So, if you or any of your customers are interested in, please come back to us. You can still participate here. Yeah, and our next webinar again in four weeks on the 21st of June. What is planned? Um, yeah, a family of devices, um, not completely new, though they are also a very new device, or they're coming also new devices in this family called KNX sensors for commercial buildings. It's a collection of, of push buttons, but also you see a motion sensor here. Very interesting room temperature controller with some more hardware inside, like binary inputs or analog inputs and other sensors, uh, humidity sensor and, and 
um, air quality sensor. So we would like to talk about this a bit more in details. Um, very nice and interesting components, so-called KNX sensors for commercial buildings. Yeah, then I say thank you so much for your patience to listen to you to us. I hope we gave you some interesting information. See you next time at the next webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao.